<laughs> Welcome back to the Talking Shit Podcast here. Captain Paul with Giggly Dr. Evil. Uh, Ooh, what up? We, just, we just had a video about Brittany Griner in Russia. And you know what? Let's stay with that theme. If you could make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, that would greatly help us. We're a newer channel at this point. Probably not that new. Looking to continually grow. Uh, let's just get right into it, man. The Russia wants to nuke the NHL. They have Kapril Kaprizov. They have fed it off from the Philadelphia Flyers also system. Capri Sun. Capri Sun. <laughs> um, they have <laughs> Antimon Panarin over there. Russia is making it very, very, very difficult for Russian-born hockey players to play in the NHL if they do go back home for the summer. You know, it's, it's crazy. Like, it just hit me, right? Do you remember when people were saying that we shouldn't even allow uh, players like Ovi to either to even play at all because yeah. uh, when the invasion first happened, he was very, very careful with the words that he used uh, going in. He was just like, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't like war. I want peace, you know, and then when pressed on it, he's like, Hey, you know, uh, I'm friends with Putin and, you know, I've supported him and I've got family back home. Wink, wink, wink. Because I don't know. Did, did, do you know if Ovi went back home after the season? I don't think he did, man. I, it's, it's one of those things we even had. We made a video on it. And people were like, no way, no way. I'm like, bro, what we, what we talked about before is coming to fruition. It's happening because it's not just family members. If you go back to Russia and you're Russian, it ain't pretty. Like Panarin, remember Panarin, those allegations happened from like 15 years ago or some wild stuff. And it was proven false too. Proven false to make him come back. He had a meeting with somebody. Then all of a sudden Panarin don't speak about Russia. Mm -mm. Let's, let's just be honest, he don't mm. speak about it. I'm actually surprised he even went back, but it's probably because of pressure for the government to come back to be a countryman of Russia. The proud red Russian army, you know. It makes it very difficult for these athletes that they're put in situations where, I mean, Putin's not necessarily wrapped up all tight. You know, a guy like that can have some anger management issues and uh, do some pretty corrupt shit. Isn't there some intelligence uh, pointing to uh, Putin having some sort of terminal illness or some shit like that? No, so, uh, some some people think he has the onset of like Alzheimer's or some nature like that because dementia it just seems like something. dementia. Like they, they see a mental degradation uh, from him that I think is is exasperating. I think that's why you're seeing him act more desperate. If I'm being honest with you, actually, no, I'll be fair. Putin's intelligent. Yeah, he's always I mean, been ex KGB. Even, you don't get there from being dumb. No, he, but he was very manipulative. But he he always had it kind of in the shadows, right? Now it's like a little less given a fuck, and he's like a little bit more blatant with it. Like this Russian hockey player stuff, like with Ivan Fedotov, Fedotov being detained, being drugged, and being shipped up to North Siberia, Northern Siberia, to serve on a military outpost when he just signed an NHL contract. That's kind of blatant. I don't know how true it is, as we both have a discussion. We don't, you know, the Russian courts are corrupt because it's. You know, let's be honest, it's ruled by the oligarchy and by Putin. So they're going to get their way. It's like Kaprizov making millions and millions of dollars. He gets in the country. Now they're detaining him. It's like, I don't know if it's a good look. It's definitely not a good look. And if I'm a Russian hockey player, do I go back to Russia right now? I mean, you know, look like, at the NHL draft earlier this week, right? If you are the front office of any NHL team and you're looking at your draft board, and you see a player that their, their last name ends in a V. Um, especially if you're talking about first round draft choices and the cap hit that comes when you're supposed to sign these guys so according to the slot that they are in when they are drafted. You know, do you want to use a high or medium high draft pick on a player if you're not even sure that they're going to be able to get out of the country. Okay, so like the Wild were the first person to take a person from Russia in the draft. And what were and they picking at? It was 24th. <laughs> and uh, Danella Yurov was taken 24th. Where in this draft, he should have been a top five pick. Right. But you had a lot of teams 
wary of it because of the Russia situation right now with Ukraine and how they're kind of being strict with military conscription and all mm-hmm. it's inscription and making people do their time. It, it's a wa- it's a swing for the fences type thing. Now, mind you, they had Capri sauce, so they thought they were fine. But now Capri sauce and Russia in trouble. So we don't know how the Minnesota Wild are going to look. But more importantly, it is very difficult for these teams, and especially in the NHL, to take a gamble on a first round or second round pick on a Russian hockey player because you don't know if he'll ever come over. Yeah, you just don't know. I mean, it's it reminds me of the Iron Curtain back in the day, where like elite players, right? Like Pavel Bure, Dominic Kashik. Um, and Davik, Dominic Kashik is in Czech Republic, but he still wasn't right. allowed right. over he because of that. He was still in book. the Soviet bloc at the right. time. Right. So, yeah, Pavel Bure, you know, a, a very talented Russian players come over a little bit later and have to, like, get paid off by those NHL teams to the Russian government because it's a corrupt system in Russia. If yeah, they yeah. do not want you leaving the country, they will make damn sure you don't. After the Novichok attack, yep. I mean, the, the fucking charges that they came up with was like, what the fuck kind of charge is that? And now Why? he's serving in a maximum security prison as if, like, you know, he's this, you know, danger to society to harm somebody. Yeah. When he's just so the you- opposition leader. Exactly. It's just the furthest thing from the truth, but you want to weaken your opposition, and that's how Putin does it. It's, it's, he's a smart man, manipulative and evil, but it's, it's smart. You get rid of all, all the competition you possibly can. And what, what, uh, what, what, char- what charges do you think that they would hit us with for doing this video? Treason? <laughs> We're not even Russia to hit us with treason. Treason. <laughs> like, yeah, 100 years for treason. I think they would hit me with uh, talking while black. I mean, I think they'd get me talking while red. I mean, I'm rare and red. I mean, shit, I might be a prodigal son over there. Um, but <laughs> I mean, stupid. I mean, you are a hockey player. That's true. You're getting these people's lives ruined because of a a stupid war, uh, a stupid military occupation that's destroying lives over there, and yeah. from a leader that I we're seeing. The degradation of his mental state. It, mm-hmm. It's definitely kind of apparent here. So, I mean, as um, a New York Rangers fan, I look at, you know, the guys that are on our team. Uh, we had uh, an issue with the front office and Kraftsoft, so they let him play in, uh, I think, the KHL. Yep. And then he just uh, left the KHL and then signed a one-year deal, deal with the Rangers right after the Rangers yep. were eliminated from the playoffs. Is he going to make it? Uh, Artemi Panarin is one of our premier players, although I believe he had some sort of injury that he was playing with uh, during the playoffs. Yep. Is he going to make it back state, stateside for training camp? Uh, Igor Shosturkin is a young uh, Russian hockey player who is one of the best goaltenders in all of the NHL. And will he ever be able to go home again? Because from the last that I heard, he didn't go home this offseason. Think about the Russian hockey players that are not going to be forced to play in Russia for money that has been severely devalued because of sanctions. Think about it. You know what? You know what? Eighty million rubles is eight hundred or seven hundred fifty k. No, it's nine hundred thousand dollars U.S. Think about that. That's how devalued the ruble has become because of all of this. So it's um, yeah, it's not pretty, man. It's not pretty. So I'm Captain Paul. That's Dr. Mm. Evil. Yep. And let's just say, if you have different apo- thoughts, opinions, comment down below. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts, your opinions. Agree, disagree, kind of in the middle somewhere. Um, and like I said, if you like, subscribe. be greatly appreciated as well. So, Also, uh, for, you, mm-hmm. for, for some of you guys who may know of other athletes we covered Brittany Griner in the previous video we're talking more about the the hockey players that are uh, having some trouble uh being able to make it for the 22 uh the 22-23 season uh you know talk about some of the athletes uh the Russian athletes uh that you guys uh have seen uh having some trouble put them in the comments section down below as well we're done talking our shit and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.